lot of top-notch doctors and scientists and NDEs. He he just asked really good questions and really dug deep into the subject matter. But he uh, with with the skeptic the skeptics are, are how I put this. If you can't prove it scientifically, it doesn't exist in their minds. Yeah, sure. <laughs> and I think that, you know, you couldn't prove the earth was round at a certain period. And there's a line that I heard a long time ago that I really liked. It. Is, you know, oh, no offense. I got a buddy in here. You, uh, the earth is round. I got a guest <laughs> coming on next week. It, it believes the earth is flat. So, wow. I'm sorry. I just... You know, when you said that, I thought about <laughs> that next week. That's crazy. Yeah. Um, it, but, you know, the, the line was that a skeptic says that, you know, if you can't prove it scientifically, it doesn't exist. Then the question back, and I like this, is have you ever been in love? Prove it. And how can you prove it? It's just, it's just, it's, it's an intangible. There's it's some things that I don't know that they can be uh, uh, proved or not, but. Dr. Parnia said that 200 years ago, we could envision sending someone to the moon and bringing them back safely because I can see a point in time where we can send people to the other side and bring them back safely. And I found that to be absolutely fascinating, but I don't think I'd be the first one to raise my hand to volunteer. Uh, I wouldn't uh, do it either. No way. <laughs> Hey, now, uh, I, 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 I got some explaining to do. Yeah, you know, I have a question. <laughs> now, I know this is not a, a near death experience, where I guess it could be. I was talking to a medium, uh, you know, last night, and uh, I was telling her about my father. My father had Alzheimer's. He was in the nursing home the last year uh, he was living. He didn't know, probably the last eight, nine months he lived, he didn't even know who anybody was. Uh, he didn't recognize me. He didn't recognize uh, my brother. He didn't recognize my kids. He didn't even oh. n even know, you know, he, he couldn't even carry on a conversation. Mm -hmm. And uh, the last day I went and saw him at the nursing home, uh, all of a sudden, you know, there he was in a vegetable state. He looked at me and then started talking and he was totally coherent. Wow. And, and I mean, totally coherent now this is somebody who you know his brain no offense it was pretty much non-existent at that point mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you know he remembered who i was he you know asked me you know how my business was doing you know if i still had it uh asked me about my kids he remembered you know their names and all that stuff and i'm going oh wow then that's amazing then he l looked at me and grabbed my hand and said mom is here and she's going to take me home today. Wow. And, That's and, fascinating. And we, you know, uh, we even talked. The The nurses brought him a sandwich. He actually even ate, which they said he, you know, he wasn't even eating in, mm -hmm. in, in months. Uh, you know, they had to feed him, you know, uh, the way they, I guess they do. Uh, I visited him for a long time and I go, wow. But he kept talking about my mom because uh, my mom was passed on. And, uh, -huh. uh, you know, she was there and then he started talking about her brothers and his brother, you know, it came and saw him and, you know, he was telling me about heaven and, and what... they all passed. Yeah. They all were passed. You know, a couple uh -huh. of, uh, my mom's brothers passed in the the fifties. One of them passed, uh, uh, during world war two. And he said they were there uh -huh. and talking to him. And when I left, uh, by the time I got home, I got a phone call that he passed on and, uh, it was so strange because there he was totally coherent. Everybody was, the doctor was there. Everybody was in total shock. And, that at, was really amazing. and you know, all I could get from the doctors is that they never saw anything like that before, but they had, oh. they, they couldn't, um, they couldn't give me any answers because they said there was no answers. So, I mean, if that's a near death experience, I don't know what it is, but I mean, you know, uh, I mean, that is really interesting. And did he, did he kind of imply that your mother was in the same room? Oh yeah. Brothers? No, he said that uh, my mom was right there, you know, right there. And he could, you know, he was talking to her and not right then, but he said he was talking to her that day. And she said, 
it's time to come home, Joe, and that uh, you'll love it. And, you know, and he was telling me all this stuff. Wow. And, you know, for a minute I thought he was hallucinating, but then, you know, again, here's somebody that's been in a vegetable state at that point at least eight months. And totally coherent. Just totally you know, and he was telling me what my mom was saying, what, what heaven was like, you know, that there's no pain, uh, you know, you, you go back to your younger self, the best, you know, or he was saying to me that he was going to go back to his best uh, time in his life, physically, uh, emotionally, mm-hmm. and, you know, uh, mom was going to be there with him, and they were just going to go on with their life. Isn't that interesting that Two people that are not blood related are connected that way. Oh yeah, that I mean. I mean, what if he, what if the time he went back? Do you want to go back to you was before he met her? Yeah, you know, and it just it, it astounded me so much. I mean, it, it just you know, and wow. after you he, know, it, I uh, when I was doing hypnosis, one of the things in doing regressive hypnosis and and. Hypnosis is absolutely fascinating. And there's a Stanford scale for hypnosis, one through six. And six, six is deep, deep. If we can do surgery on you, we can, you know, put, put dental caps in your teeth. You won't feel it that, that deep. But, you know, we're in various states of trance throughout the day. You're driving and spacing out or you're watching a TV show that you're enthralled with. It's just flickering lights, but you still get emotional about it. That's all a trance state music puts you into a trance state um my wife puts me in a trance state <laughs> i hope she's i hope she's not in that room with you uh oh, in all the best ways um they're like a beautiful painting but this so this, so there's you know we go in the trance and, and hypnosis is just a way of taking that trance to a, a slightly deeper level and if and if, if you do a Google search or, or YouTube search for hip, dental hypnosis, you'll see some amazing videos of people not using anesthesia and having their their teeth capped and teeth removed. Anyway, the point is this: that one of the common traits, and again, I got to go back to this. I, I, I just this is my experience. This is what I saw and in this case. One of the common traits of regressive regressive hypnosis is that, well, I'll just tell you the story. I, I was working with this woman, and I took her back, and I told her we were walking down a, a corridor, and there are doors on each side that represent different periods in history or time. And when you feel compelled to or when you feel it, enter one of those rooms and she did and the first thing you ask the person to do is to look down at their feet to get a sense of what they were wearing and she said she looked down and it was um kind of animal sandals shoes made from animal skin and i said where are you at i said we're in the kitchen she said we're in the kitchen what are you doing? We're making bread for my husband's birthday. Who are you with? Uh, Cynthia, but that's my actually my daughter, um, Sally. And the, each person in the room, she recognized as being in her current life in the year 2010 or whatever that, that was. But this person was also in the 1400s or 1700s when she was having that regressive, it's not just her, but that's a, that's a typical trait of a regressive hypnosis, a regressive hypnosis. So in other words, there are people in your life that, what this applies, there are people in your life that are with your life through various lives. And that would kind of imply a belief in reincarnation, which I don't think that I have, but I know that in regressive hypnosis, that's the experience that I've had a number of times in, in taking people back and these are people that do nothing about hypnosis they just kind of volunteer to um let me practice so that was really really interesting because your father is saying that your mother is saying to come home yeah and and that immediately leads me to think about how lives come together and my wife told me that when we first met we were meant to be to, we were meant to be together you know, so, 
very interesting comment from a stout Christian woman. Yeah. Hey, so that's that. You yeah, know, when you, you mentioned reincarnation. Uh, I had a guest on here oh, a couple of weeks ago, and he said that he has reincarnated people that had like 50, 100 different lives. And uh, I don't know. I don't know if I believe it or not, because, I mean, and, and if people were being reincarnated, why were we getting so overpopulated in the world? So it, it tells me, I, just, I, I, I find it kind of hard to believe. But then again, he told me that he did a lot. He was actually a um, retired police detective so oh, he wow. he actually dug up information what he could on some of these people uh you know their stories of like they were such and such and he was able to you know go back and find out whatever they were saying actually happened and uh there i re- was a tv show uh, i don't know 10 years ago that was devoted to this exact subject yeah. There was a girl that they were paying to travel the world to investigate the reports of past lives. I don't uh, yeah. Uh, in fact, yeah, when I, the first was a doctor, uh, I can't believe this is past lives, many lives. Yeah, he, he's he's a foremost on the, on the past lives in, in what he described as a regressive hypno Gnosis experience was exactly to the T the ones that I was having in doing that. What I I stopped doing hypnosis, in fact, because it it um, how do I put this? It's very emotional for people, and sometimes I ended up in places I really didn't want to be or know about, and I didn't feel qualified to be there at that time with this person and their life. Like yeah. a three year old getting molested or something like that. I just, I felt like a peeping Tom of sorts when I'm, I was mostly interested in hypnosis for fun, recreation, exploring how the human mind works, exploring the power of influence, but I've never wanted to be in a situation like that. And some pretty seriously crazy stuff comes out of these sessions. But if anybody, you know, the, the thing about hypnosis is you, oh, you just, you don't really have to be willing to be hypnotized because if you go to um, on 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 YouTube on, on the TED Talks, are you familiar with TED Talks? No, I'm not. Not at all. Okay, it, it is the new rage in seminar presentation. People are auditioned to make twenty-minute presentations. And then coach on how to make them really good. And there are local TED Talks and then there's national TED Talks. And they're, it's a pretty prestigious platform to be on. And there are a couple guys that get on there and talk. Their whole presentation is on hypnosis. And they'll bring people up. And it's not so much stage hypnosis. It's not so much for fun, but just to demonstrate the power of hypnosis. And one of the things that you notice is that when someone is on stage in an audience hypnotizing either one other person on stage or a group of people on stage, a number of people in the audience, their eyes will get heavy and they will go in deep hypnosis as well, sitting right in the audience, which is fascinating to me. Then there are other people that, that don't believe it. They, they feel like it means that you're weak minded, which couldn't be further from the truth. Uh, but uh, they, they'll resist it and fight it as best they can. So, it doesn't, like everything, there's a spectrum. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. Can I ask you a question, though? Have you you're, ever? You are the interviewer. Well, hey, <laughs> I, I, I gotta, I, war- I gotta warn you. I have my 20 year old part poodle, part terrier in the studio. Uh, uh, cool. He's he's near passing over. He's blind. Uh, you know, he's in a diaper and I can't, oh, I, I can't leave him alone for two minutes and oh, I don't have the heart to, you know, have him put to sleep. So, I mean, yeah. you got to bear with it if he kind of makes any yeah. weird noises, but, um, that's, that's understandable. I just, is there been people that you couldn't hypnotize at all? I'm not sure. I don't think so. Uh, it's all words. 